Hi guys, see you again on the Shonia Studio channel. This time I will tell you about a very interesting story, namely the story of the biggest counterfeiting of dollars in America. How's the full story? Keep up with this video. But before continuing, we want to remind you to like, share, and subscribe if you like this video. Let's continue the story. Albert Edward Tun, 46 years old black man, from London, Los Angeles County, California. Succeeded in printing and distributing, counterfeit notes, worth a total of $7 million, consisting of 20 and 100 US dollar denominations. Albert's counterfeit money, was recognized by the authorities, as the best counterfeit money, in the history of counterfeiting, in the United States. No one thought that Alberton, would commit the crime of counterfeiting money. He never actually thought of doing that. People knew Albert as a gentleman who spoke softly. Studied at the Faculty of Electrical Engineering, in California State University. Albert is known to be smart, and has a great curiosity. Crime is not a new thing for Robert, he has often been in trouble with the authorities, until finally in 2001 he was sentenced to five years in prison, for the crime of bank fraud. In 2004 after being released from prison, Albert worked in a repair shop in California. This is where it all started. One day his boss showed him a $50 counterfeit note, while observing the money, Albert was determined to make a better counterfeit note than that. Although Albert has no experience in making counterfeit money, nor does he have any experience in graphic design and printing, Albert is not, not worried, he is smart and likes a challenge. Every day he endlessly learns in detail the technique of making counterfeit money. Of course making counterfeit money that is difficult to detect is not easy. Government has made money as complex as possible. FO avoid counterfeiting. The choice of materia carelessly. For example, the British pound bank note, made from paper from a mixture of cotton fibers and linen fabric. Euro bank notes are made of 100% cotton, while the American currency consists of 75% cotton and 25% linen. This is what makes it unique, the paper material for making money, which distinguishes it from ordinary paper. 1996 when color photocopiers and scanners appeared, the American currency was redesigned to prevent counterfeiting, which used color photocopiers. Money making becomes more complex, including intricate drawing patterns, watermarks, safety threads, and changes color, when viewed from a different side. Albert learned all these things to start the counterfeiting. The first thing he did was, bought paper and an all-in-one package, which could function as an inkjet printer, scanner, fax, and photocopier for $150. Initially the counterfeit money produced was bad, so it could be detected easily. If you scratch it on a pen or marker, it will produce bright, or yellow streaks for real money, and brown, or black, for counterfeit notes. Albert doesn't know what caused, the detector produces a light color or yellow, if it detects real money. 
he conducted an experiment, by detecting all the papers he came across, with a detector. He even carries a detector with him everywhere, in case it is needed to detect paper at any time. Until one day while in the toilet on a whim, he grabbed the detector he was carrying, and detected toilet paper, while the detector showed a yellow color, the sign that the toilet paper was real money. Albert then concluded that in addition to toilet paper, Bible paper, dictionaries, and newspapers, the detector also detected yellow color. It shows that toilet paper, Bibles, dictionaries, and newspapers, are made from recycled paper, with the same material as money-making paper. Albert then chose newsprint as the raw material, for counterfeit money, because the price was the cheapest. Albert began to produce counterfeit money. The most difficult thing is to make money security in the form of watermarks, and security threads, which are usually embedded in money. But Albert managed to find a way. He used two sheets of thin newsprint, like tissue. He printed watermark and security thread on the back paper. Then attach the two thin paper with a security thread in it. He printed the front and back of the banknote back and forth on the paper. He then hung the counterfeit money with cloth clips, and sprayed it with hairspray, giving it the effect of real money. After all is done, the counterfeit money is cut into pieces according to the original size. In 2005, when Albert managed to make a $20 note, he gave the money to someone, to try to buy something. It worked. No one suspected. In that same year, the authorities first discovered Albert's counterfeit money, circulating in the community. They admitted that Albert's money was very good and was similar to real money. After that the demand for counterfeit money on Albert increased. He started printing $100 note. At that time, it was only distributed in the Los Angeles area. In 2006, Albert's counterfeit money, began circulating in large quantities throughout America. The US Secret Service, which is in charge of dealing with counterfeiting cases, questioned some of the caught counterfeit money users. But they said they didn't know where the counterfeit money came from. In 2007 Albert received an order for counterfeit notes of $500,000. He worked day and night, with two HP computers and nine inkjet printers and a laser jet printer, all supplies to make counterfeit notes, which he bought at Staples, a shop, that sells office supplies. Albert runs counterfeit money printing activities, neatly and quickly. As a result of this business, Albert lived a luxurious life, and owned a variety of expensive goods, including Mercedes-Benz cars. The Secret Service couldn't find it either. Until January 2008, at an H&M store. A shopper was detected using counterfeit notes of $100, under interrogation by the Secret Service, the user of the counterfeit money, claimed to have gotten the money from a person, named Troy Stroud. The Secret Service followed Troy Stroud's movements, and installed a tracking device in his Range Rover. The Secret Service also goes undercover, and buys counterfeit $20, from Troy. The $20 note was easy to distribute, because it was considered so small that people didn't examine it carefully. The Secret Service follows Troy to a house. They checked the trash can, and found torn counterfeit note, 
printer cartridges, and Albert Talton's name. Everything was uncovered, the Secret Service raided the house and found counterfeit notes worth $162,000 which were ready to be distributed. In addition, half-finished counterfeit notes were found worth $1.4 million. In 2009 Albert and three of his colleagues, were found guilty of counterfeiting money. Albert Talton was sentenced to nine years and two months in prison. From 2006 to 2009 the counterfeit money, that was printed and distributed by Albert, reached $7 million. This amount is the largest in the history of the United States, because usually the perpetrators of counterfeiting money was caught before he could print and distribute a total of $10,000 worth of counterfeit notes. Today, Albert Talton's finest counterfeit notes are $20 and $100 note, some of which are stored as samples in the specimen vault at U.S. Secret Service headquarters in Washington, D.C. See you in another story, don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe. My regards Shonia Studio.